how this 27 year old made 1 million last year. This story is simply ridiculous. It's the story about making sense of sense.com and how Michelle, the woman behind it, was able to grow her personal finance blog from just being this little side project, this little writing outlet where she was telling stories about saving and paying off college uh, student loans and all that sort of thing and how that's just, this website's transformed over the years into a $100,000 a month website. How is that done? How can we do that? Let's jump into the video right now and explore. Welcome to my laptop. Let's begin. The site in question is making sense of sense. And here's a million dollar a year blog. I love stories like this because you look at a website like this, it's unassuming. You're like, this doesn't make a million dollars a year, but Apparently it does and it's unbelievable and we're gonna explore how it's done. Uh, so I would say let's start over with the income reports really quickly. How I made $100,000 in September working in 20, in September 2018 working from home. All right, so let's jump into this one. All right, so if we were to di dissect her, we don't need to dissect too much because she does a great job of breaking up her income reports, but like we can just take a quick look and her income's cr coming from pro a couple primary sources. The first one is uh, she's an affiliate for Bluehost and she has a page dedicated to her site uh, about how to start a blog, uh, you know, but because that, that's really a great way. I mean, that's also why I create tutorials. I personally recommend SiteGround over Bluehost. Bluehost is good, but SiteGround is just better. So that's and SiteGround is also, uh, you know, one of the top three recommended web hosts by WordPress. So that's why I and I use SiteGround. So that's why I recommend them. Uh, but yeah, she's you know that's a big income source. Look at that, forty four thousand dollars from promoting. Uh, Bluehost. Now, how does she promote Bluehost? She's doing a couple of different things. So like on these income reports right here, uh, she's using ConvertKit. And the thing that you can do with ConvertKit that's really cool is that you can create different funnels with ConvertKit. So for example, we're on a, you know, income report or if we're on a, a page about like how to make money online, for example, she's probably going to use this form right here. That's like how to start a free blog email course thingy because it makes sense. But say if I was like uh, on the virtual assistant page, is she gonna be using that same form or is she gonna switch it up a bit? Okay, so she's still using a blog email course. Okay, so let's just, uh, let's go back to the home page. Let's go back to something that's totally different. Uh, five tips for a better budget, perfect. Okay, so this is an actual finance blog post. Let's see what she's using for her convert kit here. Okay, it's perfect. She has subscribe to get the money master money course. Uh, that's why ConvertKit's really cool and helpful because you can create different types of courses and lead-ins to get people to subscribe. So like what you could do with ConvertKit is like, depending on the traffic and the post, you can have a different specific form and people sign up and maybe they get like a 10 email sequence. So someone who subscribes via this form, they're gonna get 10 emails or 15 emails, whatever you set it up, the autoresponder to be, and it's gonna be about like, master your money course and just about that and you know throw in affiliate marketing and relevant products as it makes sense and that's what's being done over here with this okay so if you were to subscribe to her list on how to start a free email course it's going to be the same stuff it's like okay get your domain name get your hosting you need to start blogging blogging changed my life blah 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 and i'm not making fun of her i'm just saying like that's you know that's what you're going to expect so it's like, that's why ConvertKit's really helpful in, you know, it's not just like, oh yeah, she has one page, how to start a blog, and this one page on her site's generating 44,000. It's not. It's like, yeah, she has a dedicated page to drive traffic to, which um, how to start a blog is a keyword that's really heavily searched for, and it's super competitive. I know because I have a page, Website Creative Pro slash uh, start a blog as well, and that's just a very, very competitive keyword, and you're not gonna rank for that without building links and having a popular website. And even with all that work, you may not even rank for it as well, but it's still good to have if it makes sense for your website. Um, you know, for her, it makes sense because, you know, she blogs and she's very successful and like, okay, well, because she's so successful at blogging, that's, she can leverage that 
expertise and to be like, yeah, she can show me secrets or something that like I don't understand as a way to potentially build a massively popular blog because if she did it, she probably knows something that I don't and she can teach me something. And you know, that's basically how affiliate marketing works because uh, you know, you gotta demonstrate expertise a little bit first before you can start promoting random products. Like if I just typed in how to start a blog and I stumbled across some website and you know, it's, it's like a fitness blog and then fitness blog slash how to start a blog. It's like, well, I don't care. Who are you? Who is this? What? I don't care. But she's able to demonstrate like, look, I made a hundred thousand dollars for my blog last month. Hey, here's how you start a blog. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll listen. So that's the first big piece of her income. The second one is actually survey company companies. Uh, yes, yeah, so like online surveys pays uh, very well. You can be a you can be an affiliate for different survey companies. Uh, okay, so like, we'll just take a quick look. So this is just one page. Uh, I'm sure that she links in various other, like for example. 75 ways to make money, 10 ways to make money from home, all of these posts, she's going to be promoting these various uh, online survey programs. Uh, let's just take a quick look. All right, like Swagbucks, for example. Okay, let's just go jump into Swagbucks affiliate, just to take a quick look to see what is up. All right, so let's see what you get as an affiliate for Swagbucks. If I type in Swagbucks slash invite, for your friends by email. Also, you get 10% of their earnings for life. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a really good affiliate program. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I can see why this increases over time because it makes sense. So that she's got that, that she has a bunch of other ones that are doing really well. But then her next big one is her own personal course and sponsorship and advertising. Uh, yeah. So it's like basically she's making money from advertising, she's making money from her course, she's making money from Bluehost and survey companies. Now here she has display advertising and sponsorship in advertising. What's the difference? Display advertising is usually referring to like Google AdSense. If you have a high traffic website, you know, you can slap on Google AdSense and make thousands of dollars. Like just like I talked about in uh, another case study with Practical Wanderlust. We'll just type it in real quick. Practical Wanderlust. Uh, you know, she was, you know, this website's making thousands of dollars. Uh, let me pause my ad blocker. Like this is making thousands of dollars in ad revenue, but it's also a, a website that is getting a uh, hundred thousand visitors a month and it's doing massive amounts of page views. So like we have this ad right down there and then ads within the blog post. So. That's what she means by display advertising. Sponsorship and advertising, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I guess I could click on here. All right, do you wanna make money with sponsored posts? Waitlist, I regularly earn over $10,000 per month from sponsored posts, this resource. All right, so basically, again, she's using ConvertKit again. So this is another really creative idea. So you know, maybe she's coming out with a course or something, but what she's saying that she's doing is that she's doing sponsored content. Sponsored content is basically companies will reach out to you for opportunities to publish uh, blog posts on your website that advertise a specific product, or they will ask you to give a review or something like that. And you can be totally honest. You don't have to lie and you know anything like that, but uh, you know that's what sponsorship in advertising is. I guess for her, what I was kind of thinking it would be, would be, mm, you know, like companies reaching out and just say, hey, can I advertise on your website? But she's apparently doing sponsored blog content. Uh, okay, so now that's super interesting. That's crazy. Okay, so now we have over 300,000 monthly readers. Let's just take a quick look at SimilarWeb. SimilarWeb says it's 450,000 visitors. Okay, so it's on point. And just to take a quick look at her Pinterest accounts. Yeah, look at that. 2.6 monthly, 2.6 million monthly views. That's, that's, that's again, crazy amount of traffic. And she has 100,000 followers. Pinterest is a secret weapon for a lot of bloggers. And it's clearly a secret weapon for her because everybody thinks about Google Facebook and YouTube as like the primary places to drive 
a ton of different traffic to your website, but I don't know why Pinterest doesn't get any love. I mean, if you ever take a look at these Pinterest accounts, they're just, they're crazy. The ones that are really popular, this is crazy. 100,000 followers and 2.6 million monthly views. That's crazy. That's that's easily, that's really <laughs> gonna make it easy to get to 300,000 monthly readers and attract an audience. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, let's just take a quick look and see what her blog content is all about. Let's go back to the homepage. All right, so I like the structure of her homepage, first off. I mean, she has got a very traditional structure where you know, she's got the introduction to the site, like your core pages here, and then the latest blog post there. Very simple. Uh, it's probably what you should do. There's basically two structures to the website. It either should be just like a, a, a homepage that has an email opt-in form, and that's it, or an email opt-in form, and then the latest blog posts, or you could do something like this, where you have various introductions to, um, you know, the site, to different pages on the site like this is like a visual menu for what's going on up here and then like just the latest blog post and then you know this is thrown in this is not going to make the site that much slower because it's just a bunch of different images uh okay that's weird it's linking to the contact page but okay whatever so you know th that's basically how you'd want to structure your home page as well so it's like you know latest blog post make a visual menu that's it and or an opt-in form and get rid of all this like and just have the opt-in form there I don't know how this would perform personally because it doesn't really seem like subscribe to get posts directly in your inbox. Nobody's really gonna use that, who cares? You have to make it a little bit compelling. Like if I see like that blog course or money management course, like yeah, I'm gonna sign up, especially, um, like, you know, like once you read her, her reports that she's making, you know, hundred thousand dollars and you read her, her income reports, it's like, yeah, okay, I'll sign up and learn how to create a blog from you because you clearly know something that I don't. But again, I taking a look at her blog, she does a really good job too of creating a nice mix of different pieces of content. Like she's talking about personal like she she has good branding in the sense that like it's making sense of sense, a personal finance blog, but then it's like we have travel. And then we go into our categories and it's like we have blogging, career advice, payoff debt, my life, minimalism. Like we have a bunch of random topics. But I like that she's gone out of her way to brand her site as something like so people can conceptualize what the main idea is about, but then she kind of like strays away from that a little bit. And with a blog, that's totally fine to do. You know, you can create like a blog. It's like, okay, you're creating a personal finance blog. Okay, so for every eight posts on finance of some sort, like if you're talking about budgeting, uh, travel budgeting, uh, you know, credit cards, then it's like every eight come out with one that's a little bit off the beaten path. Because she does that occasionally, as I've noticed. Let's just take a quick look at the blog page itself. So we have Ask Me Anything, Finding Happiness in a Materialistic World. See again, it's like, okay, that's minimalism, budget, uh, questions for bloggers and no, and no bands for tax, paying off college debt, or should parents pay off college debt? Uh, let's keep going just a little bit. It's like this, what? <laughs> 13 Instapot Thanksgiving side dishes, huh? What does that have to do with finance? It has nothing to do with travel, finance. Like, like uh, you know, I like showing posts like this because it shows that like you don't, have to overthink your blog as well. Like you can stray away a little bit because it is her blog. She can kind of talk about what she wants. And this stuff is like, she, she mixes in like 10 budget recipes. Why 10 budget recipes? Cause it's a finance blog. So it's like, that's the way you kind of got to do it. Like for website creative pro, what is it about? It's like creating websites, creating blogs, and it's like case studies about building a successful website. So if I was to do something like, <laughs> if I really wanted to create a recipe, it'd be like, um, 10 like 10 drink recipes to help uh, boost your focus and concentration and work long hours or <laughs> something like that. So, you know, I don't know, this site's really great. And if we just take a look at to see her publishing frequency. So it's like, okay, so she published 31st, she published on the 30th, 29th, 28th, 24th, 22nd. You know, she's making 19th, look at this, like every, and and let's just take a look at the length of these posts as well. Like these posts are not short. Like we're talking about writing, writing 1,500 words, 2,000 words, blog posts, 
like at least three times a week. So, you know, she's doing the work. She's putting in the work. She's done a great job of building alternative traffic sources beyond just relying on Google. She does a good job of paying attention to, um, you know, SEO a little bit in terms of her titles and her page structures. Uh, I can definitely tell that like when she started the blog, she didn't know anything about SEO because this is the, one of the worst URLs. This is an area for big improvement. I, if I was to talk to her, like this is one of her weaknesses. What is up with this URL? 2018, 10, how we visit eight new countries. Oh my God, .html. Oh my God, that is horrible. Look, don't structure URLs like that. If you're gonna structure URLs like that, what you wanna do is keep your URLs as short as possible, okay? So instead of like how we visit eight countries in two, two years while paying off debt, it's like pick three words and shorten it to that. And also consider like using like the categories in the URL. Not that you have to, but it's like, uh, you know, I would definitely consider something like if it's a blog post, it, it's not the worst thing in the world to go blog slash uh, post dash title. You know, we could totally do that. That would be way better. Uh, for example, if you're, if you have a whole section where it's like, these are just review sections, it could be just like review slash, uh, coupons, you know, and then like coupon post, the name of a coupon post, or it could be slash, um, like she's big on surveys, like surveys slash, and then post title for a survey. And that's a good way to help search engines kind of orient and structure your website. So it conceptually understands what it's about. But again, it depends on how many pages, if you're going to have, if you think you're going to be blogging like her and creating like three, four blog posts a week, you may want to consider doing that. You know, if your site's only going to be, you think like 200 pages big, long or something, not the most important thing in the world. Uh, but yeah. So one last thing, let's just take a quick look at her affiliate marketing course. Um, Let's see what she's doing. All right, she's clearly using Teachable to host this product. She's got a great sales page, nice, long, and thorough. And boom, she got one-time payment and a payment plan. Looks great. And I'm sure she upsells that via the email list. So, okay guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or you have another website that you think you want me to feature, whatever, let me know. Uh, have a good day. Thank you and goodbye.